No, it's all uh, just recorded. All right. Let's see, do we have it? Let me put on my, my Obey hat here. Welcome to the Thunderdome. Do you have a name for the room yet? Yeah, it's the Airsoft room. It's the Airsoft room. I like the idea of the Thunderdome, though. <laughs> the, the Air Dome. Air the Air Dome. This, uh, 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 the soft under thumb. <laughs> I can't even talk. All right. Anyways, uh, so welcome to Adventures in Podcasting number uh, seven, I believe, with Shane, aka Slaughterhouse with a Z. How's it going? So um, I've been wanting to have you on here for quite a while, but first off, I got a present today. I got a Obey beanie here. You can see that. It's badass, right? You can get that on uh, what? Minidom dot store? Yeah, minidom uh, dot com. Minidom's got a couple of things on the website to help support the team and everything. You can get this uh, air shit beanie. Yep, he's, as well. I've, I've got a pair of Stolas Industry shorts over there that I love. Yep, they got also Get Out Sparky, one of our team members. He's got some Get Out gear on there as well. Mm. He's mispronouncing it though. It's called. It's supposed to be Get Out. Get Out. Get Out. So, uh, Slaughterhouse. Yes, sir. You are the, uh, well, here, let's get a clinky first off. And, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to taste this. Yeah, we haven't tasted this yet. If you're uh, drinking with us at home, we're having uh, St. Augustine's Distillery Florida Straight Bourbon with some Coca-Cola on ice. Yeah, because uh, I can't handle the hard stuff. Okay, no, no worries with that. You're right there with um, <laughs> um, Ruger. Yeah. You know Ruger right? I don't believe so. You and him would get along really well. I've met the Airsoft Pond gentleman. Mm -hmm. Tim. Tim, yep, yeah, um, from CIA's uh, events, you know. Yeah, he gets, buy, sell, he gets trade everywhere. Yeah, he gets around. If yeah. there's a buy-sell trade, he's there. And by the way, in case you didn't know, Airsoft Pond is a sponsor of this show. So make sure you go to airsoftpond.com. I'm going to put in a uh, an actual ad read here in a little bit, but... Uh, I'm figuring you do as we go along. Yeah, definitely check them out. Yeah, but um, but yeah, you were like the first speed softer I ever met, and now <laughs> you are the first speed softer on the podcast. How great is that? That's right. How great is that? So I already told you, and I've told other people, like, you know, we met playing at Holy Cows. Holy Cows, the beginning, man. Way back in the day, back That's in the right. days of the maze. Yeah. Those maze days were the best. That's where the name came from, man. The, the maze is where it all started, you know? So that's where you got the name Slaughterhouse. Yeah. So uh, I actually had a, a young kid. Um, I heard him say it, you know what I mean? And um, I kind of just stole it from him in a way. Yeah. Um, and it then, inspired you. Yeah, it inspired me yeah. um, and everything. And um, I don't know, it was just something about getting in there. And um, at the beginning, it only had the two doors. So being able to get to the midfield, being able to get around you guys, you know, the enemies, getting in a side door. And it was just free pickings, you know. It was literally a slaughterhouse, you right. know. Right. And uh, I just that's just what I came up with. Um, and then I painted um, SYG Sosa. Shout out to him. Um, I w his mask inspired me as well. Mm. So that's where I got the paint. So I decided to paint some teeth on there and, and uh, just kind of go from there. Yeah, I do love your mask. That was the thing, like, that really, like, made you stand out from everybody else. Because yeah. when I went to Battalion and I saw all the dye masks, yeah. I called them all slaughterhouses. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, you were the you were the speed softer. Right? Yeah. And uh, they didn't have all the paint on them. And for whatever reason, I was like, oh, I could take these guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're less intimidating. They're not going to try to bite me or something. Yeah, it's nice to have the intimidation factor, but... Uh Speed softers sometimes have that bad reputation, so sometimes it doesn't help me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an unfortunate reputation because it's mainly, because uh, we were talking about it earlier, like it's mainly like teenagers or yeah. just people that have yeah something wrong with them, you know? Yeah, it's just the whole, uh, they think it's cool to be like gangster and then uh, shoot up people and stuff, but reality check hits them hard when uh, they actually do it and, and the police have to unfortunately get involved in everything because yep. 
even though you sign the waiver, once you go past a certain point, you know, you, you, you know, it's, you're trying to hurt people, you know, it's not fun. Yeah. So I tried to, that's one of the things, you know, we were also talking about earlier about the speed self community, trying to help it grow and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's hard to grow when you have such a rough reputation, you know? Yeah. I mean, you have people that are basically manufacturing outrage yeah. for airsoft. Yeah. Like they're working for the government or something. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, know like it's it. pathetic. And, um, I, I do also want to help grow the speed soft community, which Thank is another you. reason I wanted to have you on here. So that people could meet a real speed softer because you play competitively. Yes, we play. I, uh, I'm on team obey for CIA, one of our uh, sponsors. And, um, yes, CIA right here. yes, um, we're sponsored by a couple, um, other people as well, but, um, the competitive side is definitely a different ball game mm -hmm. and everything. It's uh, it's a lot funner, but, I feel like a lot of people have that competitive instinct and everything. And when you, you got airsoft, I don't know, for me, uh, playing at Holy Cow's, what, you know, three or four years, oh, yeah. um, when the competitive side got introduced, it was like, man, I couldn't have asked for more at the time, you know? I know. I was wondering why... <clears throat> When CIA opened, I, I knew we weren't going to see you there hardly, <laughs> hardly at all, but I didn't think we were never going to see you again there, which happened to a lot of people, myself included, eventually. Yeah. You know, well, we all kind of drifted away a little bit. I went to Holy Cow's and uh, snagged my, my right-hand man. <laughs> yeah, uh, off screen here, we've got Steve. Yeah. You can see him in one of my videos, uh, uh, the the titular character of <laughs> the, uh, the title, It's All About Steve. Yeah. He uh, he was gonna shoot me in the face, but luckily he was shooting blanks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, clip uh, that how you will. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I've heard he had a couple problems. Uh, but um, um, but yeah. So how how do you want to uh, breathe some new life into the Speedsoft community? Do you have a plan for this? Well, uh, right now I'm just trying to. I'm my game plan is trying to work with obey we're going to try to work with one of our um main tournament holders which is speed qb um they got all kinds of gear most people know them in yeah. the speed uh community i got a speed qb hoodie hanging up right there and um they're they're great um we're going to try to link up with them and even maybe on our set our, our own with obey and just try to set up some friendly tournaments um ones that may not be so serious you know mm -hmm. so that people who may play milsom or may play more casual or even younger can feel a little bit of that what it's like to actually play in a tournament without having to worry about you know maybe getting run down as they say right. or uh the famous d mode would you know which is coming up and getting shot in the back of the head a bunch of times and stuff i didn't know there was a name for it d mode oh man uh, well again shout out to syg there's a uh, demo is a place for syg and he's the for one of the first people who had come up behind someone embarrass them get them in a couple times in the back of the head so and that's the highlight reel you know of, interesting of some of the people man um, okay so they do that in competitive yeah yeah so they you know for a long time that's one of the reasons why nsl is more of a professional standpoint uh standpoint they try to run like um nxl paintball okay speed qb when it first started was more of like uh <laughs> the all out be killed you know kill or be killed type of thing yeah because i've seen you guys play i've, I've gone to one of your tournaments i know i haven't been to enough but, and we appreciate the support yeah but uh you know i was expecting cia to have like bleachers so yeah. we could all like you know paint ourselves yeah like body paint we could, i could get like nine or ten guys to spill out slaughterhouse yeah <laughs> <laughs> however many it is and yeah. then just four people turn around and it's obey <laughs> <laughs> that'd be uh, epic yeah, that'd be fun but they didn't do it but um but i do like that idea of uh holding some tournaments so would you be interested in doing that at an outdoor field too yeah i mean I, I i'm more than welcome or more than happy to work with any field you know what right. i mean um holy cows if mm -hmm. they would you know be willing to hold and it doesn't have to be a speed qb and necessarily type tournament we can come up with a plan to just make it a tournament with what you have flat you just have um, you know objectives and everything that are more leaning towards the speed QB side maybe yeah. and not so milsome so you still get that 
taste or, or you right. know. Because I know a lot of Milsom guys that would probably love a game like that. Yeah. And uh, I know many, I, many, sorry. No, go ahead. Off, you uh, go. Mini Dom, he's hardcore Milsom, but at the yep. same time, he's one of the best uh, pistol players and that we have. Yeah, he's fantastic on, on that field. He's he's fantastic on all the fields. And by the way, I, I have invited him onto the podcast, so we're going to have him and Holiday. So many Dom. It's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be a fun one. I had to figure out how old he was, like yeah. I, you know, because he's he's nineteen. Yes, he's like I, so, I just need to make sure that I'm not giving him alcohol. <laughs> no, when we uh, when we first started playing with Manny Dom, I believe he was seventeen. He was still in high school. Yeah, he's uh, he. I think he's still in high school now. He left the tournament. To go to prom. Yeah, I remember he left. Wow. So when we went, when we uh, when we won the championship belt, he actually uh, um, he went to prom. Good for him. Uh, so it was quite a, a, day. a prom and championship uh, speed QB all in one night. Did he take the belt to prom? He did not. Oh, uh, no, he not. totally should have. <laughs> Although <laughs> there's guns cool. on it or depictions of firearms or something. No, That'd no, there's out. not. Yeah. <laughs> but that would that would have been cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like up, oh, up. No, you're kicked out of prom. You you came with something that has a picture of a gun on it. Yeah. Or something that looks like one. That would have been rough. Uh, he's he's a great guy. He's a real positive influence in our community. Yeah, Mini Dom is uh, definitely doing good things in both yeah. sides. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, Mini Dom Not Store is going to be interested in sponsoring the the podcast as well. Yeah. I know um, Holiday reached out to me. He was interested in that. I'm like you know. I want to support the companies that support our people. Yeah, exactly. And they do great things. Like they come out with pretty interesting designs and apparel and stuff like that. Yes, very much so. Very much so. But uh, go ahead. I believe, uh, it, it, again, bringing the community, building the community, we got to stay tight. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to come in. And I know it's rough between the whole mill, thumb, and speed, you know, soft community and everything, but. I believe, just like the real world, there is a mutual ground somewhere. I think you're right. I, I think I, we can find it. I do think that bringing your idea of a speed soft tournament to an outdoor field, I yeah. think that's going to be great. Because, um, I don't know, did you ever play at uh, Gator Paintball? I don't believe so. Back in the day. Well, they've rebranded to Outdoor Extreme Hudson, and now they're doing Airsoft. Okay. So they have a hyperball area where it looks like a pretty much like a speed qb course except it's made out of giant corrugated metal tubes really that are posted up about eight feet high okay and a few few feet apart and stuff like that i have a feeling that if because i'm going to be interviewing the owner of that field next week awesome i'll broach that idea with him because i think that would be great for him too yeah and also to bring some of the people that play at cia outside to touch grass yeah and and like i said we can come up with the plan he can set his own prices and everything like that we're there just to host the tournament mm -hmm. ref the tournament you know what i mean and we're in and out you know we don't you know we're just looking to grow i love it i'll, I'll be there to play and to do press for sure i'll, I'll support the hell out it, of that yeah i because i do want there to be more cohesion between these two factions of our sport. Yeah. We're all the same people. All the same. And Speedsoft has gotten a, a bad name from some bad actors who are not <sighs> Speedsofters. Yeah. I don't know what they are. They're just, they're posers. Yeah. Like in every way. Yeah. Even their content is fake. Yeah. Because they're, you know, I, I told this story on the last podcast, but there is some guy that in Arizona or something that was, you know, a speed softer, one of those kind. Yeah. And, you know, just overshooting people, getting shot, not calling his hits. Yeah. Stuff like that. Well, his, he got confronted by the owner and his friend, while he his friend was talking to the uh, to the uh, owner, he put mm -hmm. his GoPro down and like angled it towards them to get that whole interaction for their YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And luckily, the guy went over there and just picked it up and was like, "Here, man, I think you dropped this." And of course, the kid, you know, coward. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to do that. You know, that's yeah. what they are. They're cowards and posers, and that's why like I want people to meet real speed softers. Yeah, I feel bad because you know. 
whether they got bullied in their life or whatever the scenario is, it's just they use this as an outlet to bully and hurt and do their bidding, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's ruining the sport because whether you're a milsum or speed softer or whatever, I feel like it's a sport for all of us. It is. What people don't realize is, as you've seen, as in Steve's scenes, I go to milsum events. I yeah. put on my tan or my green and I go Hell and yeah. you know what I mean? I love Milsom events. It ain't nothing like chucking a bunch of grenades in a room and watching them go off. Right. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, you know, but we should all be out there to have fun. Right. You know? And that's what it's about. And, and it's hard, you know, in the middle of a tournament or whatnot, keeping, <laughs> keeping that smile on your mm-hmm. face. But at the end of the day, win, lose or draw, you know, I, I go home to the family and it, it makes me happy. <sighs> Yeah, that's a good way to look at it, man. Because, yeah. I mean, th- at the end of the day, this is just a hobby for most of us. Some of it's a business. You know, so there is yeah. that kind of aspect to it. But for the most part, it's a hobby sport. Everybody loves to make money. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I do think that we are going to be able to make a little bit of cohesion between those two factions because – you, your regular weekend warrior yeah. can go either side. That's what I'm saying. If you're if you're a weekend warrior, as they call it, or whatever, because I have been many times, you mm-hmm. know, years. Um, it's nice just to know that there's a tournament coming up, maybe low cost. That's not going to kill your pocket, but maybe you can go out and win a badass T-shirt, custom made, you know, yeah. champion, or you know, just win some gear or maybe a cool pistol or something, and not really. Oh, if you lose, you're not really out of a bunch of money. You didn't have to travel all crazy, you know, far and stuff. Mm-hmm. It, you know, keep it local, keep it nice. You know, people are more than welcome to travel if you're out of state or whatnot, of course. But yeah. it, it's it's not something we're trying to make a bunch of money off of or something. Again, we just want to grow the community. You know? Yeah, and I think that's gonna I think that's gonna work because yeah. it does seem to people really feed on more positivity than negativity. Yeah, you know I know negativity gets more views on YouTube. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Well, I feel like nobody wants drama in their life. Um, I love my wife. Uh, shout out to her, even though she'll probably not watch this. <laughs> right. Um, she uh, she, she loves watch it. You yeah. support your husband. Yeah. Support. Yeah. Um, she. Uh, she hates drama. She uh, she don't go grocery shopping. She doesn't go. You oh know, my god! Anywhere and um, but she'll be a uh, first one on YouTube or uh, Facebook to make sure she gets her uh, weekly drama in from other yeah. people. <laughs> That's funny how social media has become like a source of just drama. Yeah, I've gotten into that with YouTube. Like I, I follow random drama, like YouTube yeah. drama. Like there's some guy like Mama Max. Who is supposed to be a pedophile hunter? Oh, but I, I, just like a liar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like all these pedophiles that he hunted were like not pedophiles. pedophiles. <laughs> they they weren't real people half the time. That was like uh, what is it, uh, Patty Mayo or whatever oh, that guy? Yeah. Listen, I watched him uh, and a couple of them guys for a long time, and then it started coming out that they, they were fake and everything. And I'm like, no way, man. Yeah. Sure enough, I'm fucking flipping through, and there it is. You know. Yeah, he just pays people, random people. Uh, He pays them a certain amount if they get tasered, a certain amount if, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, ah. That's funny. Nothing's real anymore, man. It's like you you shut that camera off and it's (laughs) hard action, you know? Yeah, it's it's a weird kind of Matrix world that we live in with our phones and the internet and whatnot. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't know, man. Like, we have such weird connections to people now. Yeah. Where we send text messages instead of talking in person. Yeah. Um, Like, that's the whole reason I do this podcast this way. Yeah. And not, you know, teleconferencing. No offense to the people that are far away, but, you know, I'll do mobile ones so we can do that. Travel. (laughs) Yeah, travel. All right. You can stay here in the airsoft room or whatever, the thunder thunder soft room. The thunder soft. Thunder soft room. There we go. Yeah. I'm going to keep in the beginning bits when we were trying to figure it out, though. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's weird because, uh, you know, this is how we interact on, on the fields. You know, yeah. It's not like we're playing Call of Duty. So this is how I think we should talk so that people can meet you. Yeah, I feel like uh, what well, Call of Duty really gets toxic, boy. Oh, okay. God. Listen, I got Logan. <laughs> Logan, if you watch this, you, he gets uh, – he's the, he's the most silent kind of person mm-hmm. in, in, you know, in, in real life. <laughs> And day to day, he's not very loud or obnoxious, kind of like I am. Yeah, um, as they say, sarcastic asshole. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> as the wife uh, tells me, yeah. Um, he, it, but let me tell you, he gets on that mic. 
you know, old Dirty Sanchez over here can vouch. Dirty he Sanchez. just talks smack. Hey, golly, boy. You know, that's that's kind of how Larry Bird was. Yeah. You know, like, he was a real nice, soft-spoken guy until he got on the court. They, they like, he's right up to Nick Enzo. He's like, you know, I'm going to score 30 points on you. Yeah. And he goes and scores, and he comes back. He's like, I've got 27 more. <laughs> <laughs> so that, you know, that reminds you. That's kind of, I guess, um, also where the slaughterhouse came from. Yeah. Um, I feel like, man, maybe like a police officer, but kind of more real life. When I get on that field, it's like I change into a, I change into slaughterhouse, you yeah. know? It's like I play hard, I go hard, all that good stuff. But then when I go off the field, that's why, like, I've had – you may have been there before. I've had my run-ins and confrontations with people. Yeah, you know, I haven't that, seen any. Yeah, well, at Holy Cows, there was a one gentleman, and uh, we ended up getting into a confrontation or whatever. But when I go off the field, I try to uh, – be the bigger man or whatever you want to call it and go up and just be like, Hey, you know, I don't know what happened or what, you know, but let's squash it. It's just a game type of thing, right. you know, because nothing's worth holding a grudge. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, um, some on Facebook reminded me, but you got so many seconds in the day. I don't have, I don't want to waste that many, that many seconds being held up on something that's supposed to be a game. Right. We're playing with toys. You yeah. know what I mean? But at the same time, be honorable, call you hit. Right. <laughs> you know, we all, it's funny because literally I think if, if uh, Taylor, if you're editing this one, can, can we find the clip where I think Ruger said the exact same thing yeah. in the exact same way? Like, yeah, just, you know, call you hits. That's what I'm saying. But, um, you, you and Ruger get along so well. This is, this is one of the things I want to do is unite people who don't know each other. Yeah. He plays at CIA. Yeah? Yeah. You know, he's a tall guy, skinny guy. Does he run an AAP one? Mm, no. What does he want? We just played, uh, what was it, last Saturday or whatever? Remember that really tall guy? The cat with the pistol. Does he play with the pistol? Sometimes. So he looked Millicent as shit. And he was deadly accurate with that. Injury. Yeah, I, <clears throat> listen, I, if, the, if it was you, man, let oh. me tell you. There was this tall guy, and uh, he was kind of Millicent ish or whatnot, but he wasn't like super hardcore. Yeah. But, um,. He had a pistol, man, and this this dude, he kept getting me good, man. And it's the same thing. You know, I go to the center house. I don't know what it is about me and the, the center and trying to run the center of the field. But I went to the center house, and he just kept going around me, kept going around me. And then this one time, I came up, and this tiny window, I barely seen him, and he busts me right in the chest. Dang. And I'm like, man. I don't know. I could be that accurate. <laughs> Ruger is deadly. I don't know if he carry. I don't know if he plays with an AAP01. I yeah. know he has. It a, might not have been an AAP01, but I know it was he definitely has a pistol. pistol. Yeah, it was definitely a pistol. Yeah, because he plays Milsons. I mean, we all yeah. carry pistols in addition to our right. I, you know, yeah, of course. Except for me, I don't carry a pistol hardly at all anymore. Really? Yeah. You know. It's just added weight that I don't use now. Uh, you know, what's funny is I uh, I carried a pistol for a long time, and uh, I probably never once pulled it out of the holster. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's that's one of those weird things, especially when you're playing like like we did at Holy Cows, where yeah. you just have like ten, twelve minute games. Yeah. Sometimes you just don't like run out of ammo, or you just yeah. don't have that close quarters. When I run a pistol, for. I don't ever run out of ammo. I mean, I use the mag adapter with the M4, but what is that? One hundred and seventy rounds, but I don't ever run out. Well, you try to one ball people. No, I mean not necessarily. I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not necessarily a one baller. Okay. Um, You've one balled me on on video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I turn around in slaughterhouse and like hi. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I I've never tried. I mean, I will. You know, technically, but I I don't. I mean, I'm. I put, yeah, I like to triple tap. Yeah. One more for Jesus. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> two for me and one for... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah you got to give him his due. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I let him sort him out, talk to him, you know. Mm -hmm. Press the white button and respond. Right. <laughs> but uh, so I asked this question of everybody that comes on. That's an air softer. Don't do it. What? <laughs> <laughs> Where are the bodies? No, Where kidding. are the bodies? <laughs> how'd you, what was your first game of airsoft like, and how'd you get into airsoft? Like, how'd you hear about it? Mm. About it? Man, this is a crazy story. I love crazy. Not cra stories. too crazy, but so my kids go to school. Mm -hmm. I was walking by this guy, and I noticed he had Call of Duty tattoo. The chair with all the guns in the background. Oh, uh, yeah, like the Game of Thrones thing? Yeah. Yeah. 
tattooed on his arm and I just started chatting with him and I had always heard of airsoft and most like typical I think of crappy Walmart springers which I've had many times mm -hmm. flea market springers had many times so I'm thinking airsoft huh? so I talked to this guy and I started to get to know him he's like yeah we're gonna go play airsoft and I'm thinking go play airsoft huh huh yeah <laughs> and I'm like all right you know and then uh, he went and then he said something to me about it again he's like because I was playing I started playing call of duty with him online you know yeah and uh he's like yeah we're thinking about my brother's coming down blah 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 I'm gonna go play again and I'm like I think I might go. Yeah. You know, it sounds kind of fun, you know, this and the other. And uh, he was an ex-military, or okay. I, I believe his brother was. Um, and uh, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. So we went, and um, I played at uh, the Clearwater Paintball. Okay, I've um, been there. Yeah, so they have the airsoft on Sundays, I yeah, believe Sundays. it is. Yeah, Sundays. That's why um, I don't play there because I go to church on Sundays. Yeah, um, I don't play there for other reasons. But, okay. uh, <laughs> your, um, your reasons are probably the same as a lot of others. Yeah, I uh, I started playing there. I played there uh, that one time, and then um, I looked up uh, Stampede, uh, mm -hmm. Holy Cows, um, them two, uh, Troy and um, Shelly. Shelly. Best people in the world. Um, Good people. Yeah, for sure. And um, I went there. I bought my ARP-9. Okay. And I played with that for four years at uh, Stampede. Okay. Uh, three, about three, four years. And, uh, yeah, that was about it, man. I uh, I couldn't have had funner. You That's know? awesome. Because your, your story is, like, exactly like everybody else's. Yeah, Even going I, through, like, I, I thought about, like, the, the airsoft is just being the Walmart Springers. Yeah. But I swear to God, I'll, I'll be able to do a, a cut where I have everybody just say all in unison, yeah. these crappy Walmart Springers. And it's like <laughs> 10 people, like the Brady Bunch, all yeah. saying it all together. <laughs> That's so funny. I couldn't tell you. I just, I giggled inside when he said it. You right. Know, I'm going to go play airsoft, and I'm thinking... You do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll go play paintball. You do that, you know. So and, you played paintball first? Um, well, I played paintball um, as a kid, you know, um, a few years. I had a 98 Custom Tipman. Mm. Um, I played a couple, maybe a year or two, just, you know, like jungle ball, you know, as okay. they say. Um, but no, nothing uh, competitive or anything. Okay. And I was addicted to that. Um, but I was young. Uh, my mom's boyfriend, we stopped going, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Life goes on. Yeah, sometimes it fades out of your life. Yeah. Like, yeah. you were telling me that you you think that the lifespan of an airsofter is about two years? At least competitively, I feel like uh, me and Steve, or Steve and I were talking, and um, it's just hard because uh, I don't know if it's so hard on the body, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sliding and slamming into that concrete on the floor and everything even though it's polished and you get to slide and everything it's still solid it's still concrete it's still concrete i mean that's uh, the concrete foundation yeah and i don't know if it's the sport itself maybe um no one's really came out and said but um i feel like yeah about two years interesting about two years do you think it's it's just the stress of it all? Not even just the stress on your body, but the mental stress of competition? It could be. I mean, unfortunately now, like I said, with NSL didn't come down this year. It's something we were talking about. Yeah. Um, due to a small community. Right. Um, I don't know if it's the travel, because if you will truly want to play competitively, you have to prepare yourself to travel. Right. That means time away from family. That means money out of the pocket, you know, everything. Even when you're sponsored like we are, you know, mm -hmm. money comes out of our pocket left and right to be able to travel and go to these tournaments, Rhode Island, California, you know what I mean? Those are long hauls. Those are long hauls. <laughs> Steve and I did one of the things that I will never, and I promise you, never in my life do again, which is literally drive 20, what was it, seven hours? It was over a day. Yeah. Over a day, drove to Rhode Island for wow. that last NSL tournament, the championship. I've driven 16 hours in a day, but I've never driven all day, 20, literally. Just 
We didn't oh stop, didn't sleep, and that was in the back. I sat in the back of someone's truck oh. with two other people. Dude, my so. back is hurting just thinking about sitting in a car for that long. Oh, my Let God. Let me tell you, <laughs> it took me about two weeks to, like, feel normal again, I feel like. Man. You know, from just – so what, what's the feeling like to travel to these these states Man. for tournaments? I mean, it's got to be pretty cool. It like, is. Uh, there's there's not much. I mean, for for like the other side of things, like for Bill Simmers, like we're just going yeah. to play and so, but we're, you know, you know, you're fighting for a team. Yeah. Like one of two sides. It's not like yeah. you have your own team that you're going to like show what you're made of. Yeah. Well, I feel like it's storybook or bucket list, as they say. Mm-hmm. Um, the first time we traveled, man, it was, I mean, all the times were great, but it was it was fantastic to be able to have a group of people, your teammates, going to the airport together, hanging out. You know, we went, I mean, the tournament was great, but you get the bonding after in the right. hotel, yeah. you know, hanging out, going out to eat, mm-hmm. you know, being there. Well, we were there four or five days, almost a week together, battling it out on the field, you know, eating, coming up with plans, sleeping, bullshitting, you know. That's awesome. You know, walking around in our underwear, you yeah. know, doing, the, doing it all, you yeah. know. And, uh, not the P. Diddy stuff, though. Yeah, no, not the R. Kelly stuff either. No, not that either. We don't, we don't, <laughs> we don't go on that side of that. No, that, that's a bit extreme there. <laughs> but, like, it's it's that brotherhood. Yeah, you know? it's... Uh, that's what we get in the parking lot, but you're, like, you're, you're living it to the extreme, like the rock yeah. star kind of theory with that. And that's what it felt like, man, walking in the building, not necessarily like we're big dogs or nothing, but walking in there, being out of town, you know... The air is so thick, you know what I'm yeah. saying? You can barely breathe, you know what I mean? Everyone's staring down at everybody. Everyone's, you know, ready to go, you yeah. know what I mean? And uh, But it's cool because everyone goes around and says what's up to everybody Good. and everything and all that stuff. Um, so it's competitive and stuff like that, but there's still that sportsmanship. Exactly. Okay. That's how I uh, uh, I consider myself a patchwork. Okay. Me too. Um, I don't know if you can tell. Yeah. And, There's uh, patches behind me. There's patches behind him you can't even see. Yeah. And um, that's where it is. I love getting other teams' patches and, and you know, uh, uh, representing them and stuff, switching them up on the belt and everything, you know. and Yeah. Just, you know, having fun with it, you know. Hell yeah. Speaking of patches, you, you were talking about TFM. Oh, yeah, the beginning. The, uh, the Florida Mafia, am I correct? Yeah, this is where it all started here. That's when I uh, snuck over to, or we snuck over to Stampede. And stole Steve, the old riot shield guy. Yeah. And uh, whatever happened to your partner? What was that other guy's name? Oh, Thomas. 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 Yeah, he had a twin. Yeah, yeah, he's got a twin, which I never knew about, by the way. I've hung out with Thomas so many times. Yeah. We have guys night over at Steve's, okay? Playing darts and stuff, you know? Yeah. Never knew he had a twin. That's so funny. If that guy would have walked in, he could have fooled me. Like, uh, if they would have both walked in, I probably would (laughs) have. Honestly, they should do that. Like, just swap out. Oh, man. It fooled my dog. Yeah. It fooled your dog? Yeah. So his dog is a vicious man eating. Okay. He loves them. What kind of dog? A German, it's a German Shepherd Balinese mix. Wolf. Malinois? 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 A Belgian Malinois. Yes. And more German Shepherd, but. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Belgian Malinois are insane. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. yeah he's they like, drop them into war zones and they yeah. fight for us. Listen. They kill everything. He's a, he's a cool dog. And he's a psycho. And, uh... Hey, some dogs... So, I mean, the Malinois are psych... I had yeah. one. She was psycho. Cherie. I'm telling you. And, She's uh, terrorizing people in heaven right now. I guarantee you. Yeah. Scaring the crap out of them. That's this dog. And, uh... Yeah, apparently, you know, with, like, his son... Nicest dog in the world. Mm-hmm. Thomas comes over, and his twin comes over, and the dog doesn't know what to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, because Thomas <laughs> has known him since a puppy, little baby puppy. So he's all, you know, I love you and everything yeah. like that. And uh, yeah, I don't get that treatment. That's a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> that I, that's a yeah, that's a great reason to have a twin right there. I'm telling you, hey, you you handle the dog. 
Yeah. I'm going in for the loop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, if you ever get robbed, you know exactly how it happened. Oh, Thomas and the twin. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, I miss those days at Holy Cows where we had the maze, we had you guys, the riot shields. Oh, I hated the riot shielders for a long time. You know, I found it, I, I always found it to just like spice up the game. Like yeah. When you run in there and you just see Steve squatting there. And oh. Like, oh, hand, let me shoot your hand, please. Yeah. <laughs> I immediately have to run out and then go, God damn it, how do I get this guy? Yeah, I'm not fast enough. Luckily, we have grenades. Yeah. That was a great thing. And you don't have those in Speedsoft. I learned that my first day trying to speed soft yeah yeah no grenades they took out flashlights no lasers of course and everything mm -hmm. flashlights i always thought was cool um or whatnot but i guess it, it was helping people cheat as they say mm -hmm. but um it was cool because you you could put it on and leave it on the floor and run off the other way and people think you're still standing there i think that's a great idea we i you know we do that at milsom yeah events and stuff like that it's just a distraction tactic exactly is that how they think they, they use it to cheat or do they put on the strobe so that they're not like... Yeah, so what the, I mean, what uh, the claim is, is um, I feel like anything in life or sport or whatnot, if you have ways to export to how to cheat, somebody somewhere is going to learn. So what they say is because the flashlight's so bright that, let's say there was a ref standing behind you. I can't even see my BB once it leaves a certain spot. Once it goes to, to into that light at a yeah. certain, I can't see if that BB really hits. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm just all I do is which I tell like a lot of new people if they're facing a speed softer or someone is just aim for the light. Which yeah, don't get mad at me. I'm not trying to shoot your light out. Right. However, I'm just trying to shoot because I know if I hit close to or right at that light, it's going to hit you or your gun or, you know, somewhere. So, um, but they say that, you know, you lose the BB, you can't tell if the BB actually hits or not. I get it. And I mean, I use that same tactic of shooting at the light mm -hmm. when I was playing at Gulf Coast Airsoft when they were open. Yeah. Which, by the way, it sounds like Gulf Coast Airsoft is going to be like a North CIA now. Yeah. They're going to have a, a CQB course and then a speed QB course. Nice. Do they have a new uh, location yet? Or? Yeah. Yeah, but it's not going to be air conditioned. Gotcha. They were planning on getting one that was air conditioned with a building next to it that they were also going to buy and turn that into an air conditioned speed soft arena. Which well, we need. I mean, that is a that's what you need. You're you're indoors already. Yeah. The speed soft field isn't that big. Yeah. Some recommendations. Uh, air conditioning, wow. If you can pull that off, man. Huge. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, spectating, just like he said with the bleachers and stuff for CIA. Mm -hmm. Build If you build a nice competitive speed soft arena or, you know, area, make sure somewhere you have some viewing area for someone somewhere, whether you put up some plexiglass or they have to wear some type of uh, <clears throat> eye protection, but make it to where people can watch because just like anything, people want to watch. Right. People should be able to watch and to get more people interested, say the younger kids and stuff like that. If they have somewhere where they can just sit above or sit there and watch and see that it's not so you know, crazy right. or, you know, whatnot, then they might be more interested in playing. You know what I mean? I think so. I think that's going to be huge for our sport. I mean, just for like, you know, people's families, their girlfriends, their wives, their kids, yeah. their brothers, their sisters, exactly. just having your people there to watch would be great. Cause that's, that was the one bummer with CIA when I went there to, to watch, you know, yeah. we're at ground level. You know, you guys are kind of running back so, so fast that even yeah. if I had a camera, it's like, oh, I can't see you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why you need to have elevated bleachers. Yeah. <clears throat> even a second floor with a rail where you can just line up and watch. Mm -hmm. um, I forget what field it is exactly, but that's what they have. Right across the, the side where underneath where you come onto the field, right above where they're walking underneath, they have it to where you can just stand and watch just a whole row. you got to wear eye protection. I think that's but, a great idea. You know, it's it's – it's right. It's already built in. You know, you just got to throw a rail up there. But a lot of places, I guess maybe in Tampa, I'm not sure where they're going to be exactly. Um, you got to get past the codes. I think they're going to be in Hernando City. Gotcha. Which is like an hour north of here. Okay. So it's going to be like two hours away from you. Gotcha. Well, hopefully their codes aren't as strict as Tampa may be, and they can get that second, second floor, as they say. I would hope so. I mean... 
they've had a lot of struggles. Yeah, Gold Coast Airsoft. I mean, they've it's just <sighs> that they have. I never even got a chance to actually make it up there to play at the. I know the one that was open. I know. I was. Uh, yeah, we, I played with uh, the guys from DTP. Yeah, they went up there a couple times, I believe. Yeah, and I was sitting there like, man, I want to get Obey up here so we can have like a Obey versus DTP with like yeah. other people on both teams. <laughs> yeah. Know? So yeah, with, with Obey, uh, we have trouble doing team events sometimes because a couple of our people are in college. One okay. was in high school. Um, one was going through like a college co- course, basically, and okay. stuff. So everyone seemed to be real busy in life. So yeah, that happens. I mean, this is a hobby. Yeah. Yeah. This is something that we can only really afford to do when we're living our life. Probably. Yeah. Hey, the day the day to day don't if the day to day don't happen, then the weekend warrior don't happen. It does not, man. I mean, you got to put in the work to have the to have the fun. A hundred percent. Unfortunately, so um, I'm curious what you, what else you're into besides airsoft. Oh man, I like. What are your other hobbies? I feel like I've uh, tried everything, and yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm a unsatisfied man. Mm-hmm. You know, not from you know. But not, uh, for the, not for the wife. Not for the wife. Not a dig at the fam. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be on thin ice after that remark earlier. Really. No, <laughs> possibly. If you're nice to uh, Taylor, he'll he'll edit it for you. Yeah, Taylor. <sighs> I love you, bro. Not Taylor Never Breeze. Yeah. <laughs> Just make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel. I He'll hope, help you out. I hope I'm already on it, you know? You probably are. So, if not, then I guess I'm uh, I'm slacking. Yeah, then, it's def- then it'll be highlighted. Because uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure Dom promote, helps promote him as well. I think so. I- Is he the gentleman who lost his Instagram or something not too long ago and had to make a new one? No, that was Admin Airsoft. Admin Airsoft. That um, was him. This is his patch. Gotcha. He's Larp Harder. I like on it. On YouTube. He's a ex-Marine. Plays a CIA quite a bit. I mentioned that you were going to be here, but he's got his kid this weekend. Gotcha. So, I got to meet his Daddy, kid. Daddy duty. Yeah. His kid got his ears pierced today. Oh, nice. Yeah. He's like, does does that hurt more than a shot? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I... Uh... I grew up a little rough. I feel like I'd pierce my ears myself uh, with a sewing needle and a potato behind it uh, so really? many times. Yeah, because... Uh, that sounds infectious. Yeah, very. Uh, I don't know. I just wanted to pierce my ears, so I got went in the mirror, and my mom, you know, uh, growing up, she said that's what she's a, they used to do. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't have fancy, you know, ear piercing kits. So uh, I just stuck a potato right there, cut one in half, slid it back there so it had a firm, put a little dot, and right through that bad boy. Did you, I guess you did it in a mirror? Yeah, in a mirror, yeah. Oh, my God. And, uh, but uh, a couple times like this one, uh, it was never, I felt like it was never perfect, so I, I did it a couple times. There was probably like three holes in there. Did you get it professionally done eventually? Never. So you're a DIY piercer. DIY. i tell you a crazy story, man. I, pull, I pulled out most of my own tooth one time. What? Yeah, so. <laughs> How do you pull out listen, most of I, I Listen, some people call me like psychotic, bro. I would I, okay, I, I so, agree with them after hearing that you pierced Growing up my whole life, my father was a um, hard core we'll just call him a motorcycle enthusiast okay as in he was uh in a couple maybe a couple clubs and stuff yeah uh, just just, just we won't clubs. say the names of them but not very good ones and yeah. um so they weren't the heavens i grew up they? rough you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> um you want uh, some more coke on that no no, no i'm good thank you i uh I'm i grew up a little that. rough as they say so i always wanted to be uh, kind of like airsoft in uh, the army, law enforcement, okay. you know, something exciting, you yeah. know, blood pumping, you know, adrenaline. And so I was training myself at, all the way growing up um, to, like, when I had an itch, I would try to go as long as I could without itching it. Because okay. Sniper, stuff. Snipers weren't a lot of move. If you were in a certain position, right. even if the ants were eating you or whatever the case may be, you had to sit there because if you were across enemy lines, so on and so forth. So I used to dump alcohol in my wounds, you know, to make them burn so I could try to, you know, withstand pain longer and Jeez. so on and so forth. you like forth. hold your hand over a lighter <laughs> like this? Just <laughs> no, I never did that. <laughs> 
Um, uh, I'll tell you a crazy story one time. You're I'll, going to on the way home, I bet. I, I will never do it again. Oh, I never did it again. When I was younger, I set up a, um, some broken glass I found. Oh. And I punched it. And I was like, oh, you know, I'll break it up in like little pieces, you know. Yeah. Why? Uh, why? And uh, I punched it once. It turned sideways, and I punched it, and it went in between my fingers, and I screamed oh. and cried like a little oh. girl. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> and if I was your parent, I'd be like, "What is the matter with you, man?" No, I didn't tell mom. I should not have dropped you on your head so many times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did actually get dropped on my head. Really? Yeah. Uh, right on the side of the coffee table. Jeez. Yeah. But uh, that explains a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I never, I uh, never did that one. Again. Yeah, that's crazy. We're so really, why didn't you go into the service? Um, oh, um, so my father, being um, a uh, biker enthusiast, uh, he passed when I was 10, oh, uh, running from the cops. Oh. So, uh, you know, they didn't like that. So they, they bumped the back of his motorcycle and caused him to crash and took the uh, took his life from him, unfortunately. I'm sorry. I try not to hold a grudge against law enforcement because, yeah. you know, he was the dumbass who decided to make the choice to do what he did. But, um, so... Still unfortunate. Yeah. It's so never good for a kid to lose their father that young. Yeah, it, it, it uh, you know, it has its wear and tear, you know. Um, but I, uh, I wanted to be a father as quick as I could. Mm-hmm. And um, I met my wife in high school, and um, we're kind of high school sweethearts. We, uh, we, you know, had fun in high school. We were there for each other and everything and stuff. And um, we were always seemed to be in a relationship, you know, yeah. in high school and stuff. Um, but it was, uh, I think, the year after high school, I ended up breaking up with the person I was with. I went over to a good friend of mine's house, and she was there. And then uh, that was a wrap. You know, it was about a week or so later, she ended up splitting up with her boyfriend, and uh, I had my own place. So uh, I invited her over, and she kind of just never left. Interesting. And then about a year later, we had our son. And he... I, I, it's been I think it was last week uh, I forget today's date but uh, last week or so uh, he just turned 12 today is March 2nd March 2nd so he is a February 25th so was that uh, almost two weeks ago okay and uh, so and yeah he just, now? he just turned 12 wow so the little tactical tater tot is 12 that's funny I remember him when he was like that tall yeah he was itty bitty my uh, my youngest son started playing airsoft at holy cows mm -hmm. at five years old and don't tell nobody that because it's against the waiver laws i love you shelly i'm so sorry uh, <laughs> there's a uh, oh man what is the what's the term for that uh, statute of limitations. Yeah, you know it, it's been enough time. Yeah, that was four so, years ago. Yeah, he's a, he's good age now. <laughs> yeah, he, he's applicable to go. You know, but, you can uh, always just make him pick up some trash. Yeah, know, if you take so, him back uh, to the cows. I mean, hey, you know, like I said, I don't. Uh, I mean, of course, I guess there is too young, mm -hmm. but uh, five man, my my kid wanted to get out there. I I uh, shot him in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, and uh, made sure he could uh, withstand it, and he didn't cry and said he wanted to go play. So I I took him. Mm -hmm. I, and I, actually, I forget the gentleman that sold you that AA twelve. Uh, Max. Max. Uh, I should know. He actually shot him right in the chest with that. Good for Max. Yeah, he's a cop now. Yeah, I hear. Yeah, he was going through training and stuff, I believe, the last time I talked to him. Yeah, I haven't seen him in years. Yeah. You know, I, I bought that from him, expecting to be able to, like, give it back to him. Yeah, I wanted It's like a thank you for your service type thing. But I have, I've texted him a couple times, and it's just like, unless, the last time, you know, I texted him, I just, uh, I haven't heard back. Yeah. I was like, I've, I've got this thing, all, condensation sucked on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I was like, I got this thing all repaired, man, if you want to come out and play. And just radio silence. Yeah, it's tough being a cop. Yeah, it's time consuming. Especially nowadays. Oh, God. Especially nowadays. Yeah, did you... <laughs> We talked about it in the last episode, but you saw the whole acorn cop thing. I don't believe I did. Oh my god! Yeah, you need to uh, spam in the internet right now. Yeah, yeah, it was a uh, it was a thing. I watch a lot of Donut the Operator. Oh, Donut Operator covered it. Did he? Yeah, I, I missed this. I saw it on the raw police footage. So basically, what happens is this guy 
this, these cops show up for a domestic violence thing. Yeah. Arrest a guy, put him in the back of the patrol car, and they get word that he may have a silenced pistol. Oh. Which they they searched him and everything. You yeah. Find a silenced pistol. On oh, him. I mean that's not a small thing. Yeah, I would hope so. But he, like he was walking up there to like research him or something, and then an acorn dropped on the hood of the car. And he freaked out. He started doing a barrel roll. He's like, shots fired, shots fired. <laughs> and then he mag dumps his own patrol car. What? Yeah. And then, like, he tactical tactical rolls away and everything like that. It is the most insane. Watch Donut Operators break down on it. You're gonna I'm going to have to. I just watched, I believe it was just this video he just posted. Um, they're outside of an apartment complex. And this one might be on the cops. Uh, I have to give you. They're outside of the apartment complex, and uh, I guess a woman broke into her best friend's house. Yeah, it was two female cops that were yeah. there. What was it, like three mags each they freaking shot through that? Yeah. Holy. And they I, were they were just magged up. Instead of, like, backing up and getting to cover, yeah. they just stayed on the stairs and shooting just kept through this dumping. window. I can't believe the lady survived. She shouldn't have broken in there. No, no. But I'm also, not. like, those two cops, like, they... They way overreacted. Way, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, I, I don't know if she lived there or if it was just her best friend's house in general. But I guess what it was is she had a, you know, her a pistol, and they were banging on the door and everything. So she was just, you know, like I sometimes do at my house. Yeah. I, you know, walk to the, you know, door, make sure everything's fine, then I'll put it away. Well, I guess you know they saw through the window and saw that pistol, and boy, they unleashed. Oh yeah, <laughs> they just unleashed hell. I mean. Woo! Yeah, it doesn't say much for their training that they didn't kill that lady. Yeah, that, I mean, they fired at least a hundred rounds. And um, I'm, st- you know, nothing against Texas in general, but I'm still upset at the Texas top, uh, the Texas cops with the whole school incident and all that. Uh, was it a year ago? Oh, the uh, the Alvide. Yeah, or where like they didn't run in, but yeah. then they ended up going in and like somehow got their kids that went there. Yeah, and and everything. It was a bunch of chaos. Anyway, but yeah, that was uh, I believe another texas um um police unit and uh yeah man they went to town and it's like yeah that was an insane thing and i I remember like the next school shooting or whatever yeah those cops there's two of them they went right in there and they've got body camp donut cop covered that one yeah they they just double tapped that guy right on the scene yeah i I was uh scrolling social media like a couple weeks later and donut ran into those guys and got pictures with them really he's like hey the stars are one of my videos yeah i watched one of his videos this guy uh uh, he might have one tapped him across the hall uh, the uh the highway yeah i saw that what a shot what a shot those videos are intense yeah like i i have to be careful like when you see a donut operator video the first thing when you wake up you can't do that yeah (laughs) that's up my whole day like yeah i watched that video i was like oh man now i'm pumped yeah now i gotta i gotta hit the bag or get a workout (laughs) in or something because i'm just like angry at injustice yeah right now (laughs) but he was uh he was one of those first youtubers that i uh i ever saw and uh, kind of inspired me to go down the YouTube route eventually, just because it looked like he was having fun. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I had my YouTube channel for a long time, or a couple years, and uh, man, I yeah, sub the slaughterhouse. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll I haven't had a sub in so long or anything, but um, we'll put a link in the description. I uh, man, I haven't. I feel bad because I haven't uploaded content in almost a year. Man, I with the competitive and everything, and for a long time. They, you're not allowed to have cameras and stuff, so right. it uh, it died quickly. But uh, man, I shout out to to uh, people like you who just uh, uploading and creating content with a lot of people don't know. Man, that's hard work. Just it is to, to edit videos and stuff all the time. It's 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 constant, you know. Yeah, even editing something like this where I'm just like panning down here, panning down. There, yeah, it takes hours. Yeah, you know, and it's it's not. It's not hard, but it is time consuming. Yeah, exactly. And it does take up some of your energy, but it's fun. Like when you're doing, you know, just uh, like what I would do right now, I would pan right in on my face to a super close up while I'm thinking. Yeah. And then zoom away <laughs> while I'm doing stuff, while I figure it out. You know, you can have fun with it when you're just editing. Yeah. But uh, I'll help you with that. You know, when you have a tournament or something like that, yeah. I'll get, I'll do my press thing and. I'll give you the footage. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, you can make your own video out of it, or you can, or maybe we can figure out a way to get someone to edit something for you. 
Yeah. Just to put it up there for you. Yeah, I don't. Uh, let me. I got an iPhone. So no computer. No. Okay. No. Yeah. That's a lot as of far people, as I go, <laughs> a lot of people are like that, man. And it's hard to edit long form on an iPhone. I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm kind of uh, somewhat of an old soul. I uh, I'm not real computer savvy and stuff. I know I probably should, especially in now day and age. I mean, I could do my basics, you know, and stuff like that. But uh, I've never. I don't have a fancy setup. My kid, my son, my oldest had just turned 12, my tactical tater tot. Yep. Um, he wants a game and PC and all this stuff. And They all do. Oh, I just bought him a 3D printer and stuff, and it's like, holy moly, I'm looking at this shit like, yeah. <laughs> let me get out the manual. <laughs> it's insane. The 3D printers are so cool. I, I saw a guy, he 3D printed a, an entire upper receiver. Yeah. For a... Um, a uh, a submachine gun. Yeah, I can't okay. remember the, the there's A's and X's in it. Yeah. Right but um but yeah, it's it's insane. And like you're not not having a computer and not being computer savvy, that's kinda going out the ways. Yeah. You know, I not to get all conspiracy theory here, but uh, you know, AI and whatnot. They're, yeah. They're, they're, everything electronic is going to be AI. You're going to be telling a, an AI what you want and they're going to make it for you. Yeah. Let's just hope they don't take over the world. Oh, they are. Yeah. To a certain extent they are, you know, they, they kind of already are. Yeah. A lot uh, of people are scared about it, but I don't know. You see right there. Like I've got a bookcase full of books. Some yeah. of those are survival books so that I can just take out in the woods and I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, I, uh, hopefully in the next couple of years, I'll be living somewhere in Tennessee and side of a mountain doing my thing well yeah are you from florida originally yeah born and raised uh, i was born down in uh, coral springs yeah. florida um i lived in uh fort lauderdale uh, d technically davy area yeah i've been there um for it's a nice area um for a little while and that's where my father passed away and stuff right there mm. and um after that um to start over new and stuff my mom wanted to move us and i had my father's brother my uncle lived here okay and um where did he live down by the madeira beach area okay and um so we lived we moved here lived here for a little bit um and then uh that's it we kind of just grew and you know i got old enough and i stayed local but um we travel me and the wife and kids we travel georgia nor we've been north carolina tennessee nice uh, she has some family in tennessee um, I was gonna ask you why why Tennessee. Well, she's got some family there, yeah. um, but uh, I just addicted to the to the outdoors, man. Same. Um, I was going getting up bright and early, going hiking. That fresh, like you know, I just I literally got addicted, and yep. uh, that's why I've been spending so much money going on these vacations because I just want to be there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's so, nice to get out of uh, Florida sometimes. Yeah, so once I get uh, my personal credit issues uh, resolved, mm -hmm. I will hopefully buy a house that will be in Tennessee. And um, I will use uh, Florida as my vacation beach spot. There you go. You'll become a snowbird. Oh, exactly. Yes. I kind of want to do the you same won't thing. You hate me. <laughs> I won't hate you. I, you know, honestly, like most of the snowbirds, like unless you're on the roadways, I'm fine with you. I got a snowbird with big teeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so these snowbird, like I was caught behind a guy with an Iowa plate that was going like 10 under the speed limit. Ah, uh, poor guy. Like, oh, I'm just. I want to lay down my horn so bad. Yeah. But like my uh, my neighbors, I, I was finally able to get my dad's truck and my name and everything nice. registered. And uh, I let my neighbors borrow it. And they're um, they're up in Georgia right now, oh. hauling their trailer all the way up there. <laughs> Hence why I let them borrow the truck. Yeah. But um, I do want to get up to Georgia. I do. I, you said you do play Milsims. Have you heard of Striker Airsoft? I believe so. Um, is that uh, what's that massive one that everyone goes to every year? It's like the dream of all Milsom events. Oh, uh, the uh, the prison one at Immokalee. No, no, it's. I think it's in Georgia or somewhere. It's. Uh, it's like it looks. It reminds me of an abandoned base. <sighs> I don't know. Mini Dom. Everyone goes to it. Do they? Yeah. I, it may be the same place where, because um, there's a place in Conyers, Georgia, mm -hmm. that everybody talks about. And that, I think that's where one of the next striker Milsom events is. Gotcha. 
they do um they're doing events all over the place at like every field just to kind of get them yeah. noticed and whatnot I think that's probably it's either Conyers or Perry, Georgia. Gotcha. It's one of those two names. Yeah, I've never Perry been there. Familiar. Yeah, I think we're talking about the same place. I just can't. Is it uh, the Guardian Center? It might be. The Guardian Center sounds like it's right. You can comment. I need right to now. make it out to a uh, Milsom event because it, again, it's been so long. When mm-hmm. last year we were so busy, like I said, traveling and everything like that. Truly, you, I mean, you don't really have much time. Right. I got to keep the wife satisfied, and I know spend time with the Chitlins. Yeah, you got to do the family time because they really are number one. Yes. So, yes. You know, number two is work, and number three is yourself. Yes. <laughs> yes. And some people, Luke, <coughs> doesn't understand that. Um, that you know, sometimes you're late, sometimes you just can't make it, right? But it's okay because I'm gonna whoop ass during the tournament. There you go, that's the main thing that matters, there, man. Also, the only one on my team to 1v5 in the tournament format, really? Yeah, DTP. <laughs> uh oh, I love them. Where are they at? You got a patch for them? Yeah, they're up here somewhere. Listen, John, if you watch this, don't get upset at me. But yeah, we were playing, uh, yeah, I believe, was it CSL? Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't even realize it until after um, I was going through the uh, YouTube live and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it come to find out, I ended up um, 1v5ing them. Really? Yeah. So you um, were five on five, and then it got down to you. Yeah, so almost right at the beginning, because I was replaying it, counting each person that walked off the field. And um, right at the beginning, you see we we break off the wall, we all get to our bunkers, and all of a sudden you just see all my whole team just start, like, walking off. Uh Uh-oh. And I'm over here in the corner, and I don't know. And the only reason I won is because they didn't know their kill count, which is very important in speak uh, soft, Mm -hmm. was off. They didn't know how many people walked off or nothing. So they're thinking basically the whole team's still alive. They start moving up one by one, one by one. And I'm over in the corner, and I just pick them off, pick them off, pick them off. You know? And, again, I didn't think it happened. I run up, hang the flag, yada, yada. And um, I was so excited about it. You know, I was at that night like a little kid, rewinding videos, looking at this and everything. Because every, when I got off the field, everyone's like, you won before, you won this, you won that. So I was like, wow, cool. So I started re- watching, watching. And sure enough, nope, there was one more. There I got them all. Five. So See, that's badass, dude. That's got to be really re- rewarding. It, it's one of the coolest things. I, I, I for sure never in my life thought that was going to happen. 1v5 in a team in the middle of a tournament? Come on, man. Good job on that, that's dude. That's crazy. I appreciate it. I, it's crazy. I still don't believe it, but Luke don't have that on me either. <laughs> Yeah, Luke, work harder, Luke. Yeah, Luke is getting as much of a beating as your wife on this one. Yeah, <laughs> I love Luke though, but I gotta give him a hard time. You know? Yeah, I'm sure he loves his wife too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's the college kid. Yeah, he's the college student. Yeah, I know Luke. Um, yeah, I've got um, Bishop. I, I, yeah, I've got his beanie here somewhere. Oh Lord, the Bishop beanie. Let me grab that real quick. I'm gonna get a beanie collection here. Yeah, we got it right here. Where are you? Oh, where? Aha. Yeah, I'm sorry. You had to get out of the garbage, Luke. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> dust the, uh, get the dust off get of that. Get the dust right off that bad boy. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a straight-up beanie collection. i got a Bishop beanie, uh, Airship beanie. I've got the uh, Obey beanie. I've got the Outdoor Extreme beanie over there. That's right. Beanies, beanies, beanies. Gotta represent. Good thing is I shaved my head so my head gets cold. Yeah, you know what's weird is uh, I was talking to the wife and I had said something. I was like, man, I think I'm gonna bring him. Uh, I'm gonna get a, the beanie and stuff. And uh, she's like, oh, I'm not a hat. Not a I was like, I feel like he's a beanie guy. I know. I've been told that I'm a beanie guy. I feel like you're a beanie guy. It feels right. <laughs> it feels right. Yeah. That's all that matters. They're man. comfy. Plus, when they get wet from your sweat, like you just yeah. flip them inside out. Air dry. Never thought about that. Just air dry. I've always wondered, what is that? A fedora? Yeah, the little hat. The little nice hats, maybe yeah. a little feather. Yeah. Man, he looks so nice with one of those on, you know? Mm-hmm. Just like a, I don't know, professional or something. I'll get a, I'll get a fedora. I'm getting a, a little bit of a props thing here for uh, for all the photos. And I, stuff. Is, I was seeing that. Was it 
the last person that you had on, one of you guys had the uh, the hats, <laughs> the foil hats and stuff. Yeah, like that. that was um, Taylor. Yeah, he's he's get, he lives ten minutes away from here, so he's uh, kind of like going to be my recurring character. Gotcha. Plus, he's he's a marine that's really into uh, conspiracy theories. Oh yeah. So you know, as he said, he'll fill uh, your head full of bullshit. What what kind of conspiracy theory is? Oh, it? all of them. Like, would you like to talk conspiracy theories? Like, I have a like, foil hat right there. What? <laughs> <laughs> you wanna, or do you want the tinfoil helmet? Oh man, that's a level three I have, helmet. I have, a, is it? Yeah, I have a couple crazy. I have. He's got a helmet like that. And I have a crazy video of me acting a fool. Oh uh, yeah. There you go. Oh man, this that boy's heavy. It's level three A. I can shoot you in the head. Professionally wrapped, by the way. Yeah, I know, right? There we go. So I have an idea about making a tinfoil beanie, by the way. Ooh. Yeah. I think it's falling apart on me. Give it like a rainbow thing. Yeah, you just need that extra layer of tinfoil and you'll be good. There you go. So you look great. So what that. is your conspiracy theories? What, what, what are those? Uh, I don't know if I have any. I just know that uh, I just like to ter- talk to people who think the earth's flat. Dude, okay, so I'm not going to out this person. <laughs> I'm not outing you. And, and, okay, you can be slick, and I can be slick, too, right? I like to hit him with a... Don't get me wrong. See, this is messing my glasses up. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> the, the earth... Knocked it right off my head. ...that we're standing on is indeed flat. Yeah. But the atmosphere and everything that makes the earth is indeed a sphere. Yeah, there's definitely parts of the earth that are flat. That's why we have levels. Exactly. But I did meet... Recently, one of our fellow airsofters who I was talking to, he's like, so I'm kind of becoming a flat earther. Oh. And myself and another airsofter just started laughing. I was like, no, please, no. And he was like, I just said, like, it's probably a disc. I'm like, no, uh, no, no. I'm tired of hearing about Antarctica, too, in the wall. Yeah, there's no wall there. Okay. It's just a whole lot of ice. Let me tell you, if Trump couldn't build a wall, I don't think Antarctica's got a wall. No, there's okay. no way. Because he would have bought the wall and brought it over here. That's what I'm saying. He would have just blocked it up and brought yeah. it over to Mexico and, yeah, you know, called it a day. And he would have cooled down the border, too. He would have solved global warming. <sighs> It's it's a with racism. Kill kill two birds with one stone. I yeah, guess, you know. Uh, that's some funny stuff. Yeah. I just, so, are, like, are there any conspiracy theories that you you like to talk about? Uh, not necessarily. What you got on your mind? Mm. I've been watching this show called The Y Files. Okay, never heard of it. So it's it's a conspiracy theory show where they basically just kind of explore different uh different topics and stuff like that i haven't watched it in a little while but i did see a, a clip from joe rogan oh the man yeah where him and cat williams got really really oh. high <laughs> cat williams <laughs> Woo, that man there boy he's a little on the loopy side a little bit a little bit i i found out during the podcast that he was a jehovah's witness which oh, kind of something i didn't know yeah that kind of makes sense so like he wasn't allowed to celebrate his birthday for the longest uh, time no christmas no thanksgiving sad world no tv mm. so he said he read like 30 books a week uh, which i think is a bit much yeah, but I mean, if you ain't got nothing else to do, I guess uh, mm-hmm. that's the only outlet. No, but like they were talking about weird stuff like, like what if we turned out to be aliens? Like, how could that happen? Yeah. How, how could we be aliens on our own planet? Listen, I still don't understand uh, the people downtown. What do you mean? What, what, what are they? The people downtown? Yeah, you know... Uh, Steve, Scientologist. Scientologist. Oh, those the Clearwater guys. Uh, oh my God, that's so funny when I see them. They're all like robots, almost uh, walking around, and well, yeah, they're in a cult. Yeah, they're in a cult of uh, almost a cult of personality. Like I've watched documentaries on that stuff, and like John Travolta's in it. Yeah, that guy, uh, the guy that played Hyde on that '70s show, he was in it. Really, I didn't know that. Um, isn't uh, Tom Cruise? Yeah, Tom Cruise is Tom in it. Cruise. But that guy Hyde from that '70s show, like he uh, he assaulted some women, mm-hmm. and like he's in jail for like sixty years now. And he did that through the Church of Scientology. Oh, so like they they actually convicted him, and he's sitting there in prison right now. 
for yeah, up to no means years. no. No means no, bro. <laughs> no means no. <laughs> like it, we it try was... to learn that as kids, you know, but uh, I guess yeah. all of us are a little thicker in the, in the yeah. head. Than Some people are crazy, and you know, so, and John Travolta's in it, and they were. I saw a documentary where they're like, he's at that level in Scientology where he is allowed to straight up kill people, and he's allowed to do that. Yeah, in the eyes of Scientology. Yeah, like I would never want to be around you. Or you're allowed to kill me? No, bro. Right? That's a beautiful thing about living in society. I'm pretty sure like none of you guys are going to kill me. That's why I brought you to my house. <laughs> Listen. On another note, where'd you get that flag? Which flag? Oh, surrender the booty. Mm-hmm. So I've had that flag since college. Same thing with this really? Dropkick Murphys one. I've got really? stuff from like high school. I have my high school Catholic school uniform. I'm going to send you a picture when I get home. Yeah, you got one of those too? I have a red one that hangs above my bed. See, it used to be above my bed in college. For the wife. <laughs> yeah. For, well, I didn't have a wife, but for the ladies. Yeah. I uh, brought over there. They're like, yeah, you want to come back to my dorm? I bought that, and I was like, baby, this is for you. Mm. It's a great flag. and I mean, it's... it's yeah. uh, oh, I, I, would, I wouldn't mind making that into a patch. Right. Somehow, you know? That's one of my goals eventually is to start a uh, patch and like a patch company. Yeah. Uh, 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 All you need company. is a sewing machine. Yeah. Yeah. At least for the stitch patches. Or to know people who have sewing machines. <laughs> that too. I yeah. don't have that kind of skill. Well, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, people out there. You got uh, Ginger Matt. Shout out to him. Ginger Matt. Yeah, Ginger. Well, I think it's Ginger Is Matt um, on Instagram. Uh, okay. He does a lot of like the slaughter patches and stuff like really? that. And then you have... Uh, I like those slaughter patches. Those look good. Listen, I got so many. I'm a slaughterhead, bro. I got slaughterhouse. Mm-hmm. I got slaughter patches. What's crazy... I was wondering about that. So what's crazy is I thought about for a long time to change my name because um, you have slaughter... And yeah. then you have Kill House. Yeah, there's a Kill House. Yeah, and then I... There's also a Slaughterhouse with a S. Really? Mm-hmm. Never seen that. So I came up with Slaughterhouse, but I, I didn't know, like, starting at um, Holy Cows, you know, so on and so forth. I didn't know about the Speed Soft World and everything. Yeah. So not that I wish to change the name, but it's like once I been out traveling, everything like that, it's like... I don't know. I don't want to be a follower, you know? I yeah. wanted to be original. I don't know. Slaughterhouse is pretty original to me. Yeah, but now then you tell me that there's an S out there. This yeah. S guy. Yeah, but you're our slaughterhouse. You know what I yeah. mean? Like that Florida. Is, yeah, Florida rules. So that's right. another thing I wanted to talk to you about. In the Speedsoft world, does Florida have a bad reputation, like in the Milsim world? For speed softers? For airsoft in general, or just for speed softers? Like, um, do, you, do, do you hear trash talk about Florida airsoft? Not necessarily. Um, I'm not really truthfully on, a, like, a bunch of forums or anything like that. But right. I don't necessarily hear ever hear anything about Florida okay. as, uh, in airsoft. It's uh, it's mostly just always about the, uh, the little psycho kids that run around and overshoot people and whatnot. Well, at least that's there. That's a positive thing for the speed soft world. Yeah, Florida's rough in there in, in its own uh, way. Yeah, we're rough in a lot of ways, but like in the Milsim world, Florida has a really bad reputation, apparently. Really? Yeah, like the worst in the country. Wow. Yeah. Really? Well, I can tell you that um, I've been to a couple Milsim events, and uh, I'm not necessarily going to throw them under the bus, but I'll tell you the local area they're from, which yeah. would be Miami. Okay. Um, that is the place that a lot of people talk about. There are maybe one or two teams I know that are from that area that are heavy in Milsim that um, a lot of people just don't like. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that after the show off yeah. camera because I think I know who you're talking about. Most people know. Um, and um, I would assume those people, or at least, you know, yeah. are probably the main people because, like I said, they're heavy in Milsom. I'm sure they travel. They do. And they were at, um, oh, God. What was it? Um, oh, Kasavak. That was the name of it. That was the one that I wish you guys came to. But, um, yeah, they were definitely there, I think. Listen, just send an invite. As long as we don't have a tournament, I'll go. I'm going to do that, man. Because, you know, speaking of 
bringing Speedsoft and Milson together, I got an idea that uh, there's a there's an event put on by Hefez Airsoft okay. in uh, like southwest southeast Florida, somewhere around there. Basically, it's seven man teams versus mm-hmm. seven man teams. Okay. I want to put together an interdisciplinary airsoft team where we have Milsim, Speedsoft, mm-hmm. and Weekend Warriors all playing on the same team. Yeah, I want to see what happens. I was I was going to invite you and Steve. Hey, I'm there as two members of that team. I'll be there because I want to travel with you guys too. Like I want to yeah. find people I want to hang out with. <laughs> yeah, it, it's good to travel with people. You know, yeah, you know, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, plus I know you guys would be good and honorable, honorable players. So I think you're good ambassadors for the sport. That's that's kind of why I wear the jerseys and everything because uh, I don't want I no like excuses. That. I want to. If you hit me, I want to be able to feel it. I yeah. don't. I don't want no. Uh, sorry. Sorry, it was at my best. They're sorry, you know. That's I wear a belt to carry my mags, and that's all I need. Yep. Yeah, and I'm sure some people aim for the belt just to be nice. You know, that way they're not hitting you in the skin. Man, I had same day that tall, skinny gentleman mm-hmm. was just having his way with me. <laughs> Ruger, if that's you, I know you're gonna yell phrasing or something. Right yeah, now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, uh, there was a guy with a shotgun that was just running through, and uh, he, he definitely um, uh, mercyed me. Yeah, I was like, ah. Oh. Thank you so much. That's good. <laughs> that one of our... <laughs> I get that at CIA all the time. Yeah. But, like, another thing I wanted to ask you, the difference between Speedsoft and Milsim that I've heard from a lot of people is that indoor play, you don't have as many quote-unquote cheaters, like people that aren't calling their hits, uh-huh. than you have outdoor play. Like, you've played both indoors and outdoors. What what, are, what do you think about that? Um, I feel like I, I could see more people not calling their stuff outdoors necessarily because most of the time like at holy cows you're shooting a lot further of a distance thank you and um i've even seen it sometimes where you know you get so far or i've been so far away where someone's looking through their scope like at bta and they're shooting and i literally see their bbs dropping in front of me right and in their scope it may look like it they're coming and hitting Mm -hmm. but after so long you lose that eye of sight there's no way one person can shoot that far yeah. in an outdoor field and be able to track that BB that far. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I just with the bushes, and I think that's one of the reasons why I not necessarily have not went back to outdoors, but maybe didn't care so much for a long time to go back because then you have – which it, it is true in some cases, but you have like the tree branches, you have the bushes. Someone gets behind a bush and you're laying into that bush and they're like, well, it's not hitting me. It's hitting all the branches and leaves and right. you know, this, that, and the other. And yes, for the most part, when you hit something, it, it can make the BB veer. But if someone's sitting there beaming into the bush in one spot and everything like that, eventually it's going to hit you. There's, right. I, I feel like... There's no way it's not. You know what I mean? Yeah, in a lot of fields, they're starting to say, like, palm fronds are not cover. Yeah. You know, if you're getting shot and it's hitting a palm frond, it's hitting you. If a real bullet was going through a palm frond, it's going to hit you. Yeah, if you're thinking Milsom terms, yeah. again, anything that's not hard cover, as they say, mm-hmm. um, again, and I'm beating into that bush, I mean, eventually I feel like that's got to be hit. Yeah. And, you know, <sighs> We, you and I, dealt with that the hardcover issue at Holy Cows. Correct. Like, I remember that one video where, like, the field was falling apart. Yeah. Like we're shooting at each other. Like, which one of us is dead? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I just went and asked the rep. I was like, "What's going on here?" And then I remember yeah. you coming up. You're like, "Cheater!" <laughs> <laughs> like, I was gonna make a cheater video out of that. But um, but that that kind of gets me to one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is the. Uh, the cheater videos in general. Oh Lord. Like you're a YouTube creator that doesn't make cheater videos. And I'm yeah. curious why that is. Cause I'm, I'm the same way. Um, I, I guess I've never not thought about it, but I've never, I mean, there's so many people that are out there that make cheater videos mm-hmm. and it's just toxicity. You know, um, I feel like it breeds the toxicity and it doesn't do anything for me 
as a creator to put that out there besides trying to uh, hunt views, you know, and try to get yeah. that views and stuff. Clout chasing. I don't make, I never started making my YouTube videos to be famous or to anything. I made them because I was having fun. I thought other people might enjoy it. So I made it. Making a toxic cheater video is, I feel like, bad for the community. Mm-hmm. Because it just shows what people are out there doing when they shouldn't be, mm -hmm. you know. It, it doesn't do anything for the creator. Right. And it doesn't do anything for the field. Yeah. Because look at CIA. We, I think that was one of the failing points at the beginning is we didn't, we weren't so hardcore on some of those speed softers, banning them, kicking them out and stuff. Mm. And I think it shied away a lot of people because, you know, they see these videos of these kids running through, spamming, doing all this, cheating videos, all this. And now nobody wants to come and play there. Right. Who would want to go to a field that all you're seeing is cheating videos and seeing speed softers run around and spray the crap out of people? Yeah. I'm not. I'm a speed softer, and I'm not going there to deal with that. Right. So, I mean, I, cheater videos... They are what they are. They are. I mean, whenever I see them recommended to me on YouTube, I, I open them up. I give them an automatic thumbs down. Yeah, I, I, I don't just, even watch I, it. Yeah, I. I watch a lot of. <laughs> I love snipers. Uh, yeah, those are. Speaking fun. Speaking of the army and stuff, so I, I watch a lot of kicking Mustang. Okay. Um, you should watch Airsoft Cam Man. I, I've seen a few of him. That's where I've seen the MTW for the first time. Oh, okay. What a gun! Yeah, I know. I want one. What a gun! You I know. know. There's a lot of those, that's on man. the bucket list. I know. Mm -hmm. <sighs> one day, yeah, one day. Ain't lying. I'm selling half my shit just to be able to get one of them. <laughs> yeah, buy it. I need one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I would definitely trade some of these on the wall for one of those. I'm telling you, all day. But um, so, is there anything else you you feel like you want to cover? Uh, not really, man. I just wanted to come on and then and, and uh, give you know a little bit of the speed soft stuff yeah. story and um, let everyone know, like you know, I. I you know, just like anything, I, I would think Milsom, um, Speed Soft, whatnot, there's always going to be those assholes. There's always going to be those pricks who just want the highlight reel or whatever. But don't let that person, as they say, win. Come out, have fun. The, the competitive side and having that contest and, and being able to win and be able to have your group of guys come together. It's, it's, it's legendary, you know? Yeah. Milsom, <coughs> Some Milsom teams know that, you know. Um, they go out and they travel and they do Milsom events and everything. But the first time I stepped on that field and we won that championship belt, it was the greatest feeling in the world. I know. I saw all those pictures of you. I've never seen you smile that big. <laughs> it was uh, it was the greatest thing in the world. And uh, I, I couldn't have asked for more, you know. And that's why I'm hungry and that's why I wanted to play this year. But I think we were talking about lifespan of airsofters. Yeah. I wanted to make this year big because I have a 12-year-old, a 9-year-old son, and they. I want to be with them for the most part. Right. So after this year, I may stop playing competitive for a while. I want to let them grow. They want to do some things, play sports, so on and so forth. I get it. So I will still be there. I want to ref, you know, and, and I'll... I'll never quit playing airsoft. Mm. I'll be, hopefully, maybe that'll give me more time to hook up with you and yeah. be able to travel a little bit more and stuff. Yeah, I'd love to have you out of the fields. You're, but you're definitely like my favorite speed softer. I appreciate it. Like I can honestly <laughs> say that, like from the bottom of my heart, you really are. You're my first speed softer, and you're still my favorite. I try to stay on the good side of the. Yeah, you have now. not disappointed me in the two years I've known you. I appreciate like, it. Like you, you've been, uh, you've been an exemplary. You've been an example of what a speed softer should be. I see both. I I try, you know, I, and that's the thing is I know that speed softers as a, the name can be so much more. Right. You know what I mean? And that's why there's other. That's why Gulf Coast Airsoft is doing the speed soft stuff too. Yeah. Because I don't know if you, you're. I think you knew like the owner. He made a whole post where like speed softers were welcome. Oh yeah, we had was, that road. <laughs> right. Because he was talking about the douchebags that you were talking about. Correct. He wasn't yeah. talking about you or Steve. Yeah. But like really, the people that turned around for him was DTP. Yeah. Like when DTP came out and played with them, he was like, oh. 
these are speed softers. Yeah. Oh, like you can see that realization pop yeah. into his head. He was like, oh, those douchebags were calling themselves something else so they could kind of get past it. Yeah. You know? And, um, you know, I, I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being a great example for this community. I appreciate it. And like I said, I my my kids played. They were on the field at five. I I love seeing kids out there, man. Yeah. It, it warms my heart. You know, I, I don't even shoot at them most of the time, to be honest with you. I just love seeing them run around. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, let them shoot me. What's it going to do? Oh, I got to walk back to respawn. Big deal. You know yeah, what I mean? That kid's going to remember. He's going to tell his friends on Monday. Yeah. Like, he, I shot Slaughterhouse. He got the guy with the sharp teeth. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? He, he, he got me. I got the scary guy. That's right. And then uh, I used to be able to put it on YouTube. You know what I mean? And, and I five them and let them know hey go watch your youtube later with dad your dad you'll be able to see yourself i do the same thing and that's what makes it great yeah i do i i agree it's all it's all about the community and that's why i'm really hoping that everybody has seen here that our speedsoft community is exactly the same as our milsom community yes the real speedsoft community yeah because there's really no difference in what you've been saying the entire time other than ruger rye yeah then uh bracker one nine yeah koi you, you know koi I believe so. Yeah, we used to all play together way back in the day. He was the guy yeah. leading the bonsai charge all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, you can't forget Koi. But, um, but yeah, it, there's nothing else that you want to cover? That's it for me, man. I just wanted to get on and just let everybody know, you know, that uh, – Speed soft is speed soft. Speed know? soft is airsoft. That's right. You know, I think that's how we all need to view it. It's just another form, just like Milsim. Yeah, airsoft is airsoft. Yeah, and it, and I'm hoping that more people are going to be willing to try out airsoft. So I, I yeah. am going to be doing everything I can to promote. Yeah, what feel free to reach out on Facebook, Instagram, or whatever if you if anybody has any questions or anything, and or wants to come out to practice. And uh, we're trying to ho- hold a little obey clinic tomorrow night, which this video will probably be out after that. Yeah, but um, we're we're gonna try to start holding uh, hosting little uh, clinics as they call them, to where like we are doing our practice, and you guys can join in, you can watch, and then we can do some small scrimmages after to try to get everyone involved, and you know let them watch a little bit and they can jump in one or two games if they'd like and and just go from there you know what i mean it's just it's you start small and we can work our way up i have, yeah. no, I have no problem with baby steps yeah and i think that's what you're going to need for getting people into the competitive side of things absolutely because that's what you need just to get people into airsoft they normally start off as rentals yeah then they buy you know a rifle or something yeah and then they wind up with an entire room in their house full of airsoft stuff as do i yeah <laughs> Well, dude, it was a pleasure getting to talk to you today. And I know you said you were camera shy, but you did fantastic. Yeah, hence the glasses. I haven't took them off. But, yeah, uh, we just man, to be cool, guys. It's, uh, it took about a month, and uh, my heart racing. The camera is intimidating, you know, but uh, it's a little like camera. I- I feel like I made it through it, so. You did a fantastic job, just like Bracker19, man. Yeah. Like, he's one of those soft-spoken guys who's like, I'm, I'm worried about this. Like, you don't need to be. I might have an intimidating mask, but uh, I swear, I'm a shy sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, beneath the mask, you're just an airsofter, just like the rest of us, man. Kind-hearted, yeah. integrity, all that good stuff. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you inviting me on and everything. This is uh, the first podcast I've ever been on. I know uh, they had a couple before. Before, and uh, it was more of like a sign up thing but uh, I, I appreciate the invite and uh, maybe I'll be back uh, eventually and you know we'll you have will. a round too you will because uh, I, I am going to have Steve on here because yeah he's hiding he's, yeah he don't want to be on camera it's we have right. matching jerseys though because we're with a d- dynamic duo yeah yeah <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I am going to get multiple uh, microphones so that we can do team casts. Awesome, yeah. I'm going to call them team casts. Team I just cast. came out with that. <laughs> right off the top of my no, head. Write right that here. down. Yeah, team casts. Uh, trademarked. That's, that's right. That's what I have to say. But, yeah, I want to do that so that I can get Obey out there, get DTP out there, get a Absolutely. couple of them. Especially, like, when you're – when you're done with a tournament or something, I'd love yeah. for you guys to just sit down and talk about the tournament, talk about how you feel, 
so many emotions. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully you've got the belt sitting there on display that hopefully. we can have like nice lighting on and stuff like we that. We did good, man. We won the belt and then it was like we got attached to third place. We got a couple of third places trophies and it's like, man. At least you're placing. We gotta get yeah, we're we're definitely staying on the podium, but we gotta climb. I like gold. You will. I mean, if you leave the team, though, they're not going to be as uh, as good without you. Yeah, but yeah. if I was to leave the team, we would just make an even better team. There you go. <laughs> well, I'm sure fun. most of my most of them will come. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. But uh, but yeah, it's been great talking to you, man. It's been uh, I appreciate. It. It's been a good talk. Yeah, it's it's been two years, and now we've probably spoken for about two hours for the first time in two years. About yeah. yeah. It's uh, I remember COVID hit. And then we sh- I stopped playing at uh, Holy Cows and stuff. And then uh, you started traveling and doing that and everything. So, yeah, it's been been quite a while. It's been a journey, man. But it, uh, You miss shooting me, huh? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I miss getting shot by you, too. Uh, I just remember, <laughs> where's that speed softer? <laughs> yeah, because uh, uh, yeah, it was like a badge of honor to get yeah. you. Because you were such a good player. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I try to hold myself on, on integrity and being good. You know, it, it's nothing better than. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, you can be good and cheap, you know, yep. but uh, to be good and, and, and like Steve, you know, you tell me, hey, man, I got you in the foot or something. Sometimes you don't feel it, you know, yep. but if you tell me, hey, you shot me, I'm more than happy to take your word. I'll believe you. It's nothing but a walk back to spawn. It's nothing. Believe me, yeah. I'm coming back. Exactly. <laughs> and I'll remember you, too. Yeah. And I might shoot you in the foot now. Yeah, right. That revenge. But, uh, but yeah, this was great, man. So this was uh, Adventures in Podcasting number seven. Number seven. With Shane, a.k.a. Slaughterhouse, our first speed softer on the show. I appreciate it. Did not disappoint. Make sure you check out all of his socials. Subscribe to him on YouTube. And be sure to check out his clinic at CIA. I'm sure the, you know, but this is coming out in two weeks. But I'm sure yep. this is not going to be the only one, right? Nope, nope. We're going to continue. Like I said, we're going to try to host some tournaments and everything like that. Um, just follow CIA follow uh, me on any social media and everything I'll be posting and trying to keep everybody up as updated as possible perfect yeah so I mean that's uh, I think that's a wrap man that's it you did great thanks <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, it's, it's nerve wracking I get it man you just gotta be yourself it and is. now everybody got to meet the real slaughterhouse yeah a it's too bit. bad you didn't next time we'll have you have your uh, mask on and see if I it's thought more I, you intimidating know, with the mask I I said something to him. I was like, yeah, he said, bring the mask. And yeah. I was like, I could just sit there with the mask on the whole time. <laughs> Next time. Uh, Although that would be great if you were uh, nervous. You could wear the mask instead of the sunglasses. Yeah, I feel like the sunglasses did it for me. <laughs> yeah, I think, it, I think it'll look cool. This is the first one we've done with sunglasses. Awesome. But hey, man, it was great talking to you, dude. It. Thank awesome. you so much for coming. Absolutely. I appreciate the invite. All right, let's, let's turn this off. Fucking huge. I know, right? Guess you